off to my right is an incredible outcome in vitro in vitro meaning not a living organism but what we're looking at in this particular four plots is simple along the y-axis you go from zero to a hundred percent on the top of the y-axis is obviously 100 percent that hundred percent representing what inhibition of sars cuv-2 why four plots four plots because it's representing artemisia annua from four separate cultivars and yet they achieve pretty much a similar outcome with that in mind let us begin with the caveats, or I should say disclaimer, in order to please the knowledge police. Disclaimer being, this is no way a recommendation for treatment or manufacturing any sort of product per se in reference to the pandemic of the day. Circumlocutions galore. What happened during the Dark Ages? Again, history repeats. But to proceed as follows. Artemisia annua had shown incredible, incredible potential. Now, in the very early part of this year, particularly February itself, there were starting to be rumblings of Artemisia annua. First, she came up with one study, I think it was February 15th. And that was in vitro of efficacy of Artemisia extract against SARS-CoV-2. Then, follow it up literally about a week and a half or two weeks later, Artemisia annua extract, extracts inhibit the in vitro replication of SARS-CoV-2 in two its variants. Now, what's kind of cool about this study, if you want to delve into it, is they actually utilized Artemisia annua leaves, which are over 12 years of age, and yet still was biologically viable in reference to inhibition of SARS-CoV-2 in vitro. Now, we come to today. September 8th, no, well, that's not necessarily today, but you know, more current. Artemisia annua hot ec water extracts show potent activity in vitro against COVID-19 variants, including Delta. So what they utilize is they use the glass against these particular variants, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, and Kappa. You don't see Mu yet, but again, Mu has to basically, even though it's a variant of concern, it has to raise in dominance primarily before it becomes too much of a uh, more of a question than anything else. But looking at the five variants utilized and recognizing the outcome of the in vitro study in reference to inhibition, pretty darn impressive potential of Artemisia annua. So with that in mind, let us finish off the conclusion of the abstract here and then go into the methods and materials utilized in preparation in the full study. Now to proceed. Results suggest that oral consumption of Artemisia annua hot water extracts, tea infusions, could provide a cost-effective therapy to help stave off the rapid global spread of these variants, buying time for broad implementation of vaccines, if that's your thing. Meanwhile, what they're trying to imply here as we go to the full study is that a lot of the third world is not exactly privy to any sort of vaccination. So if they can have an inexpensive, rapidly deployable prophylactic that can yield tremendous benefits to a lot of the poorer nations, hey, why not? But again, it has to be preceded with human trials, hopefully at least live animal trials. That's what the authors are pleading with because this traditional herb or I should say, or utilized in traditional medicine for an untold number of years with a long, long, safe track record in treating of other ailments, it's there, it's available, and according to at least in vitro studies, is showing great potential. So they're trying to speed up this research, going, hey, we got something here, let's go for it. Now to proceed into the full study itself. The preparation, not that complex, Remember, this is something that's going to be utilized in a lot of areas which don't have um, access to or what we'd ever call it, uh, whatever the bureaucratic preferential, preferential treatment is at that uh, particular geography. Uh, they don't have access to that. Why deprive them of something that can help them at least stave off uh, the particular pandemic of the day until they can conformly treat people based upon popular... Um, sentiment but to proceed 
Not speaking in circumlocutions. I'm just saying, hey, if something works and it's available and it's inexpensive and it could save lives, why wait? But again, it's in vitro, not in vivo, not a living organism. But to proceed as follows, plant material methods. There you go. Briefly, hot water extraction made from 10 grams of dried leaves per liter that were boiled in water for 10 minutes. Sieve to remove solids and filter sterilize at 22 micrometers prior to storage at negative 20 degrees centigrade. Not complex. Pretty simple. But to proceed as follows. Now, wait, 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 wait. Before I go to proceed as follows, I have to show you this. A lot of studies out there utilize a facsimile. They'll utilize BCOV, bovine coronavirus, in order to extrapolate uh, potential equal results in SARS-CoV-2. Now, not this team. This team actually, if you could see, the, 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 the variants and the source actually utilize the real stuff. Often you don't see that. But again, there it is. Uh, I just was curious, but I want to show you that they actually used the real stuff. To proceed as follows, to the conclusion of the full study, and I'm quoting the researchers, we urge the World Health Organization to consider including extracts and encapsulated drive leaves in their announced clinical trials that already include artesunate, 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 all right, Forgive my mispronunciation, Artez Unate. We aim to test preclinical models, SARS-CoV-2 in rodent models. Remember, they have to bring it up to a living organism to see if they can extrapolate the same type of results they get in vitro, test tube, petri dish, or whatever. So again, be patient, see what they come up with, and then see what the recommendations are to proceed. That could help advance Artemisia annua as an inexpensive therapeutic in parts of the world with logistic issues such as delivery require longer term term time to achieve vaccination levels that would ultimately quell this pandemic. It wouldn't be kind of cool if it actually worked on its own. So basically, you can offset the need for any particular other uh, pandemic mitigation factor by that time. Kind of neat. Plus, the fact is, too, if the third world aspect, uh, you don't want it to become a reservoir uh, for a perpetual pandemic or, or endemic. So... Why not? Not everyone has to do the exact same thing. And so if you, they're not going to have access to a lot of the modern medicines per se, but you have a good prophylactic out there that can be researched and potentially have great use and save many lives, as well as stop this reservoir of uh, perpetual pandemics, so be it. Not everything has to have the same answer. Some questions have three different answers. So again, this could be multiple choice, A, B, C, or all of the above. It's okay if it's all of the above. It doesn't have to just be A. But again, that's my soapbox. But Artemisia annua showing great promise. It has been repeated in multiple in vitro studies in reference to the SARS-CoV-2. In this last study, they actually utilized it against the five primary variants out there, albeit mu is not on there, so that's in the future to see, but still promising beneficial and those that are familiar we did cover this on saturday night but i wanted to go into a little more detail because it is deserving of that because it has that much potential benefit to yield incredible incredible healthy outcomes for majority of this global population albeit from my very very humble or our very very humble youtube channel but still just the same nothing can be presented to you without gratitude to the researchers and to our very very uh, elevated audience gratitude thank you and I am humbled you watch catch y'all next time see you then bye